people saying, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. And then after about a month of me talking about it, those same people had said, you know what? I didn't know what I was talking about. They they right. apologized to me and they said, you, you called it right on. You know, what I see is like the loss of not just car dealerships. I, I talked about on my show, I talked to a guy who owned, I didn't even know there was a company. Still, it was making TVs in the United States. But there was a small uh, company. He had like under 20 employees. They were making small TVs, uh, basically for uh, monitoring stuff like that. Uh, he virtually, uh, I don't even know if he's in business now, but he was, he told me he had to close up or was going to have to close up and lay off all his employees because even it was still made in the United States, most of the parts weren't made in the United States. He had an importer from China. The tariffs were being put on it. It made it where at the time he paid his employees, the wages he had has to pay in our country and the cost of the goods with the tariffs because you're basically paying taxes on that tariffs you know of all your goods you're getting he mm-hmm. said he had to lay everybody off and close up and not I, not even this that a guy i know down the street from me owns a couple auto parts stores telling me the same thing people come in and buy parts uh calipers for your car for example most of them you know, if you want to get a caliper for whatever car, they start out at eighty nine dollars to a hundred and some dollars. Those are made in China. Okay, a lot of people would right. buy those because they couldn't afford to pay three, four hundred dollars for a caliper. It was made in the United States, so they would buy the Chinese ones. He couldn't get them. Okay, people were coming in. Well, what are they going to do with their car? Drive them now? Unsafe? It, 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 this tariff thing is really causing like. Ford, Chevy to close up a lot of their branches. Harley, regardless of what our president says, uh, it, it's caused them to look at other areas to, you know, build motorcycles to get out of having to pay tariffs because they are just barely hanging on. As our older people like me and you are dying off, uh, they're finding they're not getting the sales they used to have. Now, well, didn't didn't Harley just move to the UK? Uh, the UK, uh, 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 what, uh, uh, South Vietnam or I mean, Vietnam, uh, okay. yeah, a lot of different countries because they had to, uh, because of the tariffs. And, you know, it was funny. Our president showcased them at the very beginning of his, you know, coming into office. And then they felt like they got a, a knife in their back from our president. Uh, I mean, the tariff thing, I can see one thing, but it's not a win-win situation right now. I'm reading. It's costing the average person till last week about $458. The tariffs has cost the average person in the United States that much money. Oh, yeah. Well, like I say, I don't know anything about international finance or anything like that. But but it seems to me that the, that the world is changing faster and faster and faster all the time. I mean, you, you know, I can remember it was only a couple of years ago. That I first heard this new word, Uber, and now it seems like Uber is everywhere, and not only is Uber everywhere, but that technology that they use, which is basically kind of a meetup app, you know, it's, on the one hand, it's, uh, if you want to ride, you have the app, and you use the app to tell somebody you want to ride, and then they tell somebody who wants to give a ride, that you are at this location and you want to have a ride, you know. Well, the same, the same kind of connectivity app is being used now by restaurants. People can phone up and they can order any food they want from a restaurant using a similar kind of an app. And then the restaurant has a series of people who are willing to drive, and they'll come to the restaurant, pick up your food, and drive it to your house, you know. Uh-huh. So, up here. so there's so... I was going to say, so up, there, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, up here, we uh, the, the, they use Uber for it, you know, because that's, you, you call up McDonald's and you can have it delivered by Uber. You call up in you know, local pizzeria and get your pizza. It's a, did you hear what happened to one of their drivers though last week? It was really funny. <laughs> no, I didn't. Somebody ordered, I can't remember what type, I think it was Chinese food or some type of food. I could be totally wrong. But the guy delivered it and evidently he stuck it into another bag to keep it hot. But in the other bag, evidently he um, had another pair of underpants in it for some reason. What? Oh, yeah. And uh, he forgot he, that it was in there. So he put this other bag into the bag and then he delivered it to the customer. Right. And got the money from the customer, whatever it was, and started you know walking off. And the guy pulls the bag out of food and sees a pair of uh, underpants in the other bag. <laughs> That's Herber well. you. <laughs> 
Well, there goes his tip. Yeah, well, it made, made me think for a while, do I really want to order from Uber? You never know what type of food. You know, years ago, there was that thing where people were taking Tynol and, and putting poison in it, and a few people passed on. How do you know if you use one of these services, you don't get somebody who's, you know, not quite there right. and, and, I mean, and you spikes know, your food? two sides for everything, right? Yeah. Um, but again, you know, um, these things also create opportunities, you know, the number of drivers that are losing their jobs to Uber, Uber, whether it's taxi drivers or truck drivers or whatever, you know, there's probably kids out there that are learning how to, how to create apps for smartphones that are able to earn a living doing that and maybe sell them. And, you know, so the economy and, and, the, and the world is changing, but, I mean, it's always changed, right? I mean, the life that my my parents lived wasn't this wasn't the same life that 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 I lived, and now my my kids are growing up and my grandkids, it's going to be a different world for them too. But you know, I think with those skills that I talked about earlier, you know, of sort of being aware of your thinking, being able to dream the dream that you want, and then turn that dream into a plan and a goal and action, um, you can always somehow make your way, you know. Um, so, you know, there's always, it doesn't matter what the economy is like, there's always people teaching dance lessons and swimming lessons and music lessons, you know, people can always manage to make a living if they have a skill that they can, that they can turn into a, a course or a class that they can expose to other people and, and earn, earn some money with it. You know, um, the days of, you know, when I was young, uh, the the key was to join a company with a with a strong union. Well, now unions are almost gone. It seems like they're disappearing. I don't know. You know, I well, I was a union man, but I had problems with the union I was in. Uh, where my son works, the union there, you know, he works in the grocery industry. And uh-huh. if there's a problem with the management, you call up your union. Nothing really ever gets done. And you know, it's funny. The union is supposed to be there to give the employees better wages, better working conditions and stuff like that. But, you know, I've talked to so many people who belong to unions and they feel like they're being ripped off. Yeah. Well, I guess unions don't have the power that they used to have. I mean, you know, I've, I've only been in a couple of unions, um, but they work for me. You know, when I was teaching in college, I was a member of a union because the teachers had a union and they helped me out of a couple of scrapes you know, once or twice, but, um, yeah, you know, the world's changing, but the thing is that, we're, but people don't change that much. We still have minds. We still have feelings and emotions. We still need to, to make contact with other people, whether it's to ride a motorcycle together or take a dance lesson together or learn how to set goals together, you know, um, show business, my God, how many, how many new channels and outlets are there either online or, you know, Netflix and all these various online channels, thousands of them, it seems like the entertainment business now is absolutely exploding. If you're an actor or a writer or a singer or a camera person or you can edit, you know, edit film, um, or I guess it's all digital now, you know, um, it seems to me there must be an ever-increasing number of jobs in that arena. Oh, there is. And it, you know what an indie uh, movie production is. That's where, you know, somebody who's doing it on their own without a studio, basically starting out or been in it for a few movies, they they produce their own movie, they direct it, and then they edit it, the whole thing. And, you know, they have become really popular, too. I mean, and the thing is, they don't need millions and millions and millions of dollars to make a movie. Uh, I've talked to a couple of them on my show that, you know, put on and, and make movies you're talking maybe a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars and they're making a full feature movie. Now that's paying, yeah. that's paying the actors, paying all the costs to do it. Of course they have to, you know, do everything themselves and it might take a year or two to get it out. But I mean, it, people, that takes a lot of drive and you know, but it, people are doing it. Well, I was walking downtown the other day and I passed a, um, a place, a school, I guess. I don't, can't think of the name of it now, but anyway, they had a big sign in the window and it said, learn to make movies, you know, learn to be in the movie business. And I, I, I checked the sign out and it's a school 
that teaches you um, how to use a camera, how to how to be an editor, how to how to direct movies. You know, um, if you if you watch the local cable channel, they're always asking for volunteers to come in and and learn how to operate a camera or learn how to use the sound equipment. You know, um, so the work that you do and the work that I do, basically connecting with people, entertaining people, educating people. It seems to me there's always been a place for that, and there's always going to be more places for it with all of the Internet and all the technology that's available now. Oh, especially I mean, the some Internet. Of the, you know, some of the coaching I do, I have clients that are in uh, Germany and in England, you know, as well as in the States. So time, um, I should say <laughs> space, has kind of shrunk now, you know. Oh, I mean, yeah. you and I are having this conversation, and yet you live in a different city for me. Oh, how about a different country? That's right. Same, same time zone, though. Yeah, thank God. You know, I, I I will tell you this. The Internet has opened up so much educational-wise, I mean, uh, uh, news-wise, and also if you even want to do a talk show or a music show, you, you can certainly do it on the Internet. There's tens of thousands, if not more, of Internet uh, shows or YouTube. It's, out, it's, right. it's there now more than ever. I mean, you know, I, I, I belong to a couple of news services, but you know what? I still find a lot of my news on the Internet even faster than the news services I subscribe to. And, you know, it, it just, you know, it's just so much you can learn from the Internet, which you can't learn years ago reading the newspaper. It seems incredible, you know, the way things change and also the way we get used to them, right? I mean, I remember reading something one time, and this was probably in the 80s, maybe, or the 90s. I'm not sure. But I I was reading an article about what's the future going to be like, you know. And this article said that pretty soon all the TV shows you want, all the music you want, all of the programs that you want, anything that you want, it's going to be instantly available through the computer, you know. And I remember reading that, and and it didn't make any sense to me, you know, the fact that everything was going to be available instantly because I was used to saying, okay, well, if I want to watch my favorite TV show, i got to wait till Wednesday at 7 o'clock when it comes on, right? So the fact that it would be instantly available, I, I just couldn't get it into my head. Well, of course, here we are now, maybe 20 years later, 30 years later, and that's exactly the situation that we're living in right now, you know. All of the TV shows that I used to enjoy back in the 50s and 60s when I was growing up, they're all still available on, on the Internet somewhere. And uh, movies, everything, it's all available. Books, you know, they're all available. So um, the situation has, has changed so much in terms of information and opportunities that are available. And the trick is, you know, we have to be flexible. Uh, I was I was listening to somebody the other day, and they were saying that, you know, an adult these days has to be prepared to change their line of work maybe 15 times in their working life. You know, that's like every every four or five years. you got to change what you're, what you're doing for a living. It's really bizarre. Gone are the days when one person could be an auto mechanic, you know, for 50 years. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just a different situation. But as always, you know, we're... We're people, humans haven't changed, we still have the same kind of brain, the same kind of imagination, and with the right sort of attitude, and coaching, or maybe teaching, or or putting yourself in the right environment with the right people, we can find opportunities, and we can learn skills that we can use to create more of the lifestyle that we want, and it may involve changing who we think we are changing our self-image, you know, learning how to speak in public, learning how to write, learning how to use a computer. Um, But opportunities seem to come in equal measure to the opportunities that are disappearing. Oh, yeah. Hey, our time is virtually up. Tell tell people how they can find you. Sorry. Well, how can can they find your website, uh, your Facebook page, and when your uh, next play is, how can they find all this information out? Yeah, well, the um, the book is called Mind, Time, and Power. So they can just go to www.mindtimeandpower.com. 
all, all one word. And they can read about me. They can read about my book. They can order my book. It's available all over the world now on Amazon and, and various websites. They can get the... Um,